Now, the pageant runs into this Sunday. That's tomorrow. Uh, and let me just mention that the whole city of Salamanca has turned itself into one big, giant carnival for this last hurrah of outside summer fun. Uh, there's too many activities to mention, but if you're looking for a flea market, uh, kids' rides, dancing, or just down-home eating, it's all here. It's the Falling Leaves Festival all this weekend, and it's in Salamanca. This is Barry with the Weekend Neighborhood Camera in Salamanca. <laughs> Having a good time. That's it from News Center 2. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tonight after the Miss America pageant. Until then, good night. Welcome to Throb, a place where things really start rocking this fall. When a single mom who grew up on the Beatles and the Beach Boys joins up with a young rock and roll record company. Throb, the new comedy series starring Diana Canova trying to prove you're never too old to rock and roll. Throb premieres Saturday, September 13th at 9.30 on TV2. You know, a private detective can be jailed for breaking and entering just as easily as a lawyer. Harry Mason does what he has to do to get the job done Sunday at 10. Gilbert Perrault will be back in a Sabres uniform this year. That shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone who watches New Center 2. The week before he signed, New Center 2 Sports was the first in Western New York to show you Perrault practicing with the team. It wasn't hard to predict what would follow. Now, I'm betting Perrault is back in a Sabres uniform. An important moment in Buffalo hockey. And once again, Sabres fans heard it first on New Center 2. Working harder to be Buffalo's best. This house is hopping, people having the ball. Laughing and clapping, watching it happen on the HBO Knockout Fall. The HBO Knockout Fall is here with blockbuster movies like Rambo, First Blood Part 2, Jagged Edge, and Cocoon. HBO exclusives too, like Comedy with Rodney and Robin. So catch it all on the HBO Knockout Fall. To get a special installation offer, call 1-800-HBO-FALL. Live coverage of the consecration of the new bishop, Sunday on TV2. L.A. Law will return next Thursday following Night Court on its new night. Now stay tuned for the David... Sherman Hemsley is calling the shots at this parish. Get out of here! <laughs> Now you're gonna have to do something about yourself. People are complaining you're blocking their view of the choir. He's Deacon Fry. As feisty as they come. Bring him in. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly comedy Saturdays and Global's got it. John Mackey defined his position. He played it so well he was named the NFL's all-time tight end. A true legend of the game. Tonight, following the game, except for those viewing on the West Coast, it's the story behind the story, the Hillside Strangler paralyzed Los Angeles in fear. Go behind the scenes to meet the Strangler's girlfriend, who tried to free him by committing a copycat murder. Plus, the ill-fated space shuttle Challenger was allowed to take off in spite of warnings from an expert. Learn about this disaster and much more on the story behind the story. Then it's life stories, followed by the box office man. From the producers of Unsolved Mysteries, she had an affair with the Hillside Strangler, but would she kill for him? The facts reveal the story behind the story, tonight at 7, 6 central on NBC. Our team is now your new team at 6. Join Don Postles and Lori Lasowski Monday. We now join our regularly scheduled program, already in progress. I entered into a dangerous game of manipulation with Kenneth Bianchi. In 39 American cities, from Portland... I mean, is this really going to happen? ...to New York. Could be a matter of months, even years. ...to Memphis. This town could be sitting on a ticking bomb. ...and Los Angeles. How long do we have? What are we supposed to do? There is a question no one wants to face. It runs right under the heart of the city. We are headed for a major quake. When is it coming? It seems to me none of these earthquake prediction theories work. Why are you fighting me on this? find some way to muzzle her. Things are gonna give, it couldn't be clearer. How devastating will it be? By tonight, this will all be tabletop. Why stick your neck out? Why are we throwing our future out the window? Is it my fault no one wants to listen now? Now live the drama. Mama, you, I need you. 
city of Los Angeles is virtually paralyzed. Help me! I've got to get to her. The big one. The great Los Angeles earthquake. Hits next Sunday on NBC. The story behind the story will continue in a moment. They were America's hope. Hi, Babylonia and Randy Gardner. But behind all the glitter... Trust me, it's a showgirl secret. ...was the heartbreaking truth. And she wanted to die, Bob. Based on the real story of one woman's will to win. The only one who can change things is you. On Thin Ice, the Thai Babylonia story on NBC Monday. Our team is now your new team at 6. Join Don Postles and Lori Lasowski Monday. Wednesday, he predicted the big one in San Francisco. Now he predicts the next one. December 2nd of this year. Find out where on NBC Wednesday. Then, Dear John meets L.A. Law's Corbin Burnson. I will personally set you up with a woman guaranteed to melt your belt buckle. And Robert Stack gets stars on The Finelli Boy. You are such a weasel. Then, Hunter holds the key to keep the mafia from framing his boss. I have never taken a penny from anyone. Hunter on NBC Wednesday. He's cheated his wife. I am broke. I am busted. Owes his bookie. Where's my money? And thinks he's gonna die. How long have I got? So he's double-crossed the mob. Are you crazy? Then a medical miracle saves his life. I'm a dead man. A life story like you've never seen on NBC Next. It was always three bachelors and their babes. So many women <laughs> so, in so little, so little time. Then she came along. That's a baby. Of course it's a baby. Ted Danson, Steve Gutenberg, and Tom Selleck. I think she did a doodle. Doodle! Yes! Doodle! The blockbuster movie. Your turn to change her. I'll give you $1,000 if you'll do it. Three men and a baby tonight. Coming on Nova, the miracle of life. We take you on an extraordinary journey through the actual process of human conception, growth, and birth inside the body from sperm and egg to a new human being. See The Miracle of Life, Tuesday, November 27th at 8 p.m. on Channel 17's Holiday Festival. Coming up next on Channel 17, In Search of Ancient Mysteries. You're watching News Channel 7, WKBW-TV, Buffalo. War update. I'm Carol Simpson in Washington. Baghdad Radio says Iraqi troops have been ordered to withdraw from Kuwait to positions they held before the August 2nd invasion. The Pentagon says there's scattered evidence that some Iraqi units are in fact moving north. But the White House says there's been no word through official channels, so the war goes on. Some of the worst Allied casualties today came behind the lines when debris from a Scud missile hit a U.S. barracks in Dharan, Saudi Arabia, killing at least 12 GIs and wounding 25. 40 are missing. At least 25,000 Iraqi soldiers have now surrendered to Allied forces. This has been a Gulf War update. You're in love, bro. Yeah. Tuesday after Who's the Boss? How do you handle a kid making a bold fashion statement? Alice wants me to get my ear pierced. We got a big metallic bucket out there in the garage. Catch all that blood that comes out of your head. Davis rules Tuesday. Wednesday, a cop's designs on Julie. I'm gonna give up police work and buy some spray paint. Give him an appreciation for the arts. Appreciate this. A raw expression of subculture, don't you agree? It's a culture clash on Equal Justice, Wednesday. This is an ABC News special report on the Gulf War. Reporting from New York, Peter Jennings. A brief interruption because for the millions of us who are following the war so closely, there may have been some significant developments. Take you back a couple of hours. There was an announcement on Baghdad radio earlier this evening in the name of Saddam Hussein ordering his troops to withdraw from Kuwait under a Soviet plan, which the president had rejected some days ago, which said there must first be a ceasefire. Whatever is going on, it has attracted the president's top security staff to the White House tonight. Here's ABC's Brit Hume. Brit? Now, Peter, that's correct. The uh, Bush High Command is meeting in the west wing of the White House as we speak. Uh, however, uh, spokesman Fitzwater insists that uh, we do not, he said, have any direct information from Saddam Hussein or Baghdad, and the UN has had none. Nonetheless, uh, he issued a short prepared statement in which he said that uh, despite all that, uh, there's a war on, and because there's a war on, the safety and security of U.S. coalition troops 
must be the first priority. That suggests an awareness of some kind of some major movement of Iraqi troops, perhaps in retreat. Who's at the meeting? Uh, General uh, Colin Powell, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Secretary of Defense Cheney, uh, Vice President Quayle, National Security Advisor Scowcroft, and others as well. But I wouldn't want to presume, but they wouldn't all show up if it were just an ordinary evening, would they? I would think not, Peter, although uh, there, there is some uh, real sense here that what we may be looking at as much as the situation uh, with, the with the radio broadcast from Baghdad is also the situation on the ground militarily. Okay, Britt, thanks very much. Let's go over to the Pentagon, because if anybody was looking for a reason, there is now evidence uh, that the Iraqis and the United States have had a major battle on the ground in which Bob Zelnick over at the Pentagon, the Iraqis have apparently fared appallingly. Yes, Peter, uh, uh, last night, as elements of two Marine divisions and the 2nd Armored Divisions advanced toward Kuwait City, they were counterattacked fiercely by at least three Iraqi divisions. I'm told that the Iraqis positioned themselves very, very well. They were in position to launch uh, very uh, substantial damage-causing attacks against the uh, U.S. forces, but they were outgunned. The U.S. forces had M1A1 tanks, the Iraqis had T-55s, and at the end of the battle, nearly 100 Iraqi tanks were destroyed while the U.S. forces lost not a single uh, armored vehicle. And the Pentagon, Bob, is also seeing some scattered evidence of Iraqis trying to get out of the country? Yes, Peter. The uh, evidence uh, throughout the day has been that there were some scattered units moving north, and intelligence didn't know quite what to make of it until the Baghdad radio broadcast. And uh, for the moment, at least, until contrary orders are received, the word is to uh, U.S. commanders in the field, accept nothing but surrender. Okay, Bob Zelling of the Pentagon, Britt Hume of the White House, thank you. As I said, we interrupt only because it uh, may well be a significant development. ABC's David Ensor, who is over at the United Nations, reports rather circuitous, complicated way that the Yemeni ambassador to the United Nations tells him that he's been talking to the Soviet ambassador, and the Soviets have heard at their embassy in Baghdad that this radio broadcast is serious. Uh, Saddam Hussein has now made it clear that he wants the war to come to an end, and his troops to withdraw. And let me just quote a little bit here in terms of Baghdad radio before we leave you. Orders have been issued to the armed forces to withdraw in an organized manner to the positions they held prior to August the 1st. This is regarded as a practical compliance with UN Resolution 660. You will recall that the president rejected the Iraqi-Soviet deal as it was presented to him because it did not meet with all of the UN resolutions which the president insisted on. But that's the situation as of now. We'll keep you up to date every hour on the hour or sooner. I'm Peter Jennings at ABC News headquarters in New York. This has been an ABC News special report on the Gulf War. Tuesday, the guys plan a wild bachelor party. Strippers, yeah, strippers. Ooh. So the girls have a night out. This is happening. Believe me, they're not having this much fun. 30-something. <laughs> Wednesday. Is there something wrong with him? He ate my shoes. Glad he's not my dog. Kevin, I think we should have Buster fixed. <laughs> Uh-huh. The Wonder Years and... I'm Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Mike joins a group to get the girl. I'm Mike. Hi, Mike. On Growing Pains, then... Suki, I got the job. Mom's on the stack. <laughs> Not bad, huh? That was my mother. Thank God, Doogie's still a virgin. It's tough on Doogie Hauser, MD. I want you to quit. Wednesday. This contemporary table and four chairs, just $399. Now at Dinettes and More. Tuesday, Roseanne and Dan are Vegas bound. The best odds in Las Vegas in our favor at the buffet table. Roseanne, then Aiden's left out in the cold. Remember to tell your father that I'm the one that did that. Coach! Tuesday! Wednesday, will the hunter finally bag the big game? This is not some woman that you can just mount in your den. John Ritter, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Richard Lewis, anything but love, Wednesday. Next, he's back. <laughs> You like cops? As long as they're not in my rearview mirror. Clint Eastwood is Dirty Harry. I don't like scum like you trying to kill me. He's a marked man in the Deadpool next. Tonight on Nightline, another day of major battlefield losses for Iraq and a report that Saddam orders a retreat. 
We'll have the latest from the Gulf tonight. This lovely dinette set is just $399. Now at Dinettes and More. From ABC News, this is a Gulf War update. I'm Carol Simpson in Washington. President Bush's top security advisors convened unexpectedly at the White House tonight, apparently to consider a Baghdad radio report that Iraqi troops have been ordered to withdraw from Kuwait. And just moments ago, the UN Security Council called an urgent meeting for one hour from now. Military sources say all this comes after a massive tank battle south of Kuwait City last night. At least three Iraqi divisions launched a counterattack against advancing U.S. Marines. But sources say that despite near-perfect execution, the Iraqis suffered a humiliating defeat and the Marines didn't lose a single tank. This has been a Gulf War update. ABC premiere presentation. The Deadpool is just a harmless gang. Dirty Harry is back. Sounds pretty sick to me. Chasing a killer with a celebrity hit list. In case you don't realize it, Callahan, your name is on this list, too. I want your story. Do you like cops? Call off your guns now, you hear me? Whoever's pulling off these murders is using you as inspiration. Clint Eastwood is Dirty Harry. Rest in peace. In over his head. In the Deadpool next. <laughs>